And now all new at 5.30, it is the end of a journalistic era. Longtime Miami Herald columnist Leonard Pitts Jr. is retiring. Mm, must feel good, right? Because he has been on deadline for 46 years. So what is next? Let's ask the man himself. Leonard, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations. Just share with us some of your favorite career moments to begin with. Oh my gosh, uh, favorite career. Uh, you know, winning the Pulitzer was a pretty nice, uh, was a pretty nice moment. Uh, the uh, September 11 column, uh, just the response to that, uh, and to be able to sort of encapsulate, uh, you know, some of the the nation's anger uh, and my own was a, was a pretty nice moment. But you know, it, it it's it's all about you know it's not about it, these these so supposed high points for me at least. It's about meeting you know deadlines on a on a biweekly basis. That's the whole that's the whole trick. That's the whole process is, is just head down doing the job. Absolutely. And Leonard, you never pull punches with your columns. Let me ask you this. Are people, do you think, less tolerant now of differing opinions? And if so, how do we change that? Yeah, they're less tolerant. And I think that the way that you, uh, I, I think there needs to be a top down or a bottom up, I should say, uh, education um, uh, in, um, initiative in this country. One, to teach people uh, their civic responsibilities. Uh, one of which is to, uh, is, you know, the First Amendment sort of presupposes that we're going to be tolerant of other people's uh, opinion. We may not agree with, the, with those opinions, but we're not going to, um, you know, we're not going to uh, somehow try to, to require government to step in and, and censor those opinions. And, you know, the distinction has to be drawn that there, the First Amendment is not indicted when I tell you I don't like what you said or when a private company does that, but when the government uses its power to, uh, to, to, to stop people from saying whatever. And we're seeing more and more of that, uh, particularly with regard to uh, restrictions on teaching of uh, African-American and other inconvenient histories. Mm -hmm. You have had such an extraordinary career, and thank you for all that you've contributed to our community. But now you're retiring. It's a new chapter. Yes. What is next? I am going to write books uh, and, 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 and just enjoy life. I'm going to be writing books. I'm going to be teaching. Uh, I've got an African-American uh, history portal that I've been uh, slowly assembling uh, for the last uh, few years. I'm going to be able to not so slowly work on that for the, you know, for the, for the duration. So I've got a lot of stuff to keep me busy. I got, I got a garage to clean out. <laughs> <laughs> I got lots of stuff to do. It's, I'm not going to have a shortage of stuff to do. I'm just not going to have deadlines to do it, uh, to do it in. I hear you. Well, you've written four novels already. I, I read yes, Grant sir. Park from a few years ago because oh, wow. that was based in my hometown of Chicago. I enjoyed that. So I look Thank forward you. to uh, the, the future ones. And you started out as a music critic, so maybe you can get back to that, Leonard. The music has changed just a little bit since 1976, <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. <laughs> I got you. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us, and congratulations on a marvelous career. Congratulations. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. All right.